live and direct from the Dirty T. We are back with a nameless podcast. I'm Josh Kahn. I'm here with my European brothers, Pelle Larson and Kirk Risa. How are you guys? Why did you say his name first? Whoa. <laughs> are you that, is that no, important I mean to I'm you? I'm closer to him. It's <laughs> direct line of sight. Real talk. Your name is first on everything right now. <laughs> Think about it. See, this is what I have to do with every day. It's not a selfish podcast, but... I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long week, long weekend. A lot has gone down, but it's Valentine's Day, as you can tell by the flowers. We're on video. How are you, how are you guys doing? How are you enjoying Valentine's Day? Uh, yeah, happy Valentine's Day to all the ladies and um, all the other people, but ladies mostly. And, uh, I mean, it's been pretty pretty average Valentine Day so far. You know, practice, film, studies. Uh, so it's pretty average. Uh, yeah, happy Valentine's Day. Mom, everyone at home, uh, happy to be recording with, with video. And, uh, yeah, just excited. No shout-outs? Of course, I mean, mom, always sister, grandma, you know. Uh, but I've, I've, already, I've already told them, uh, you know. So, uh, but yeah, um, uh, he already said. Mm. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. <laughs> <coughs> so before we get too far into the episode, um, we should give a quick shout out to all the fans. Everyone's been super supportive, um, running up the YouTube numbers. The more you guys do it, the more we can give for you guys. The mailbag was deep today. We are uh, pause, <coughs> pause. I guess forty k fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, facts. <laughs> yeah, how? All right, I'm yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Table that one. Do the intro. Table that do, one. The, do the intro. Um, we're in our makeshift set right now. We're going to have something a little bit better going forward, but it's nice to be on video so you guys can can see these beautiful faces. Um, so let's get some stuff out of the way. Uh, Stanford game this weekend, not the uh, expected outcome or the outcome you guys wanted. Um, if you went on – I mean, you guys dropped down to eight in the AP poll – if you went on Twitter, you would think that the program was disbanding and the sky is falling. Uh, give it, give me your thoughts on, on what happened this weekend. For sure, it was a bad loss. Uh, you know, uh, obviously we had different plans and uh, plans always don't work the way you want them to work. And uh, we got a little bit out rebounded, uh, which cost us uh, pretty much the game, I would say. And, uh, you know, we weren't really 100 percent everybody on the same page. Uh, from players, uh, you know, we got to do a better job. Uh, and and so far, after every loss, we have bounced back good. So, you know, I'm I'm more excited, but I know that the U of A, you know, fan base is right now, yeah, kind of, like you said, it's in the mod right now, our program. So, you know, but I think it's excitement for, for the players to get better. I mean, what do I add to that? <laughs> I don't know, but... Uh, yeah, whatever Kurt said, and then, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, we we kind of played out of our way, I think, a way that we haven't played all season, uh, and I think that just made us realize what we got to get back to and, like, what we're actually really good at, and uh, uh, you kind of need those uh, resets sometimes, and come comes at a great moment, so. Yeah. You guys have got revenge on your other losses this year and now you have a a chance to do that against Utah as well you guys are uh, gonna take that I mean I will say it's tough this is the first thing I thought after the Stanford game tough to game plan when a team shoots that well I mean like not only uh, like obviously wasn't your guys best game but they were also lights out um, mm. but now another chance to do that uh, against Utah who has also played their best game against you guys earlier in the season I mean, everybody plays the best <laughs> game against us. Like yeah. I got <laughs> yeah. to give a huge shout out to O'Connell from Stanford. Um, against us, lights out every year. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. He's got to have some type of vendetta against I Curry because <laughs> like this uh, every time he plays Curry, it just it shoots it in his face crazy. every time, and Buzzers, it's not something. Fadeaways, you name it. He got it. He got the whole bag against us e every year. <laughs> from freshman year. Was this his career high? Huh? I don't know. If not, then he had a career high freshman year against <laughs> us. He came in. Yeah, I actually didn't remember. I don't. I don't think I played yet. But, uh, but yeah, we were struggling <laughs> against him. Really. Let's let's dip into the mailbag already. Mm -hmm. Bringing up O'Connell. 
who is the toughest player that you guys have played against so far at U of A? That one came from somebody, for sure. You mean like in college? In college so far. Mm -hmm. I would probably, I'll probably have to go back my freshman year uh, when I was at Utah, and we played uh, Oregon. I remember, Duarte. yeah, Duarte. Mm -hmm. uh, matching up against him because he kind of he could score like mid-range threes inside any type of way so a lot of players in college you can kind of give them something and and then you can just live with that he kind of he kind of has the ability to pick you apart a in all three levels so yeah he was probably my toughest matchup yeah um i mean it's not that i was really guarding like the whole game duarte but uh, i i I would go with the same one, but uh, if we're speaking like the best player, if we count like even the practices, then I'm honestly gonna say James Okinjo. Uh, individually, crazy like, like the bucket, like a bucket, like yeah. he's like literally like a walking bucket, like one on one, like amazing player, like amazing, like it's just very hard to guard. Also, can score different ways and super fast, and he has that dog in him and. You know, I would say James Akinjo. I think it's interesting that you guys both picked Duarte. Now, teammates with your former teammate, Benedict. Um, and that you didn't pick Benedict. <laughs> 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 to be fair, to be fair, when you guys were playing Duarte, he was like 23. No, he, so yeah. yeah. No, he was super experienced. He was, uh, you know, it, yeah, he was, he already knew, like, yeah. the everything. So he was, yeah, that that's why we picked Duarte. Who are you know, but they're teammates now, so good, good. Can get buckets together. <laughs> 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 so let's stick on the NBA then. A um, lot of stuff went down at the deadline. Um, do you guys? I mean, KD to the Suns, Kyrie to the Mavs, Josh Hart to the Knicks. <laughs> <laughs> they he and Brunson combined for like seventy last night. So, yeah. um, but after all that went down, I say we all. Pick a team through the rest of the season that's going to win the chip. Your your favorite right now. Deadline's over with. And uh, what, do, what do we do with that? Maybe I a, think, uh, a little forfeit? A I little think, yeah, I think the viewers should um, drop the uh, below some comments that what the loser should do. Yeah, we'll do most like comment on YouTube. But it has to be reasonable. Yeah, all right, keep it reasonable, guys. It can't but be like you know whatever it, whatever it is. I don't want we'll to even start, start <laughs> like imagine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something reasonable, but all something good. All right, who's gonna go? F who, who wants to pick first? I'm I'm going last. Not it. Ah, you got sure, it. Sure. Yeah. Uh. Shot me. No, classic <laughs> man. Uh, my East Coast bias is gonna come to life here. I still think the Celtics are the best team in basketball. Defensively. They're not even, like, in terms of the metrics, not what they were last year. But they were the best defensive team in basketball last year. This year, the best offensive team in basketball. They're going to put it together. I also, I, I don't believe it. Yeah, I, I think uh, now you can go with some crazy comments because we have a loser here. <laughs> so <laughs> I do not have belief in Boston at all. Um, I think uh, they can't win it all. Uh, but I said I go third, so. Oh, all right. I was thinking of Boston, but like to me, they're just kind of boring. I don't know why, but. <laughs> like so let let's get it straight. So you don't think they win a championship because they're boring? No, I don't want to pick them to win a champ. Yeah. I want to pick someone like I want to root for and believe in that. Mm -hmm. Rock also, I don't. Think I, I, don't <laughs> <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> I don't. I think someone in the West is winning for sure, yeah. and I would love. I think in the East, I would probably say Milwaukee over Boston, actually. But I'm thinking I want Nuggets to win, and I think Nuggets. Because they've been in playoffs so many times, and, like, they haven't really – they've been, like, a fourth seed every year. Now they're one, I think. And yeah. I think just they're just ready now more than ever before. Mm, that's actually a good pick. They uh, traded Bones Highland, though. Oh, they did. That's the boy. Where did he go? Like, like Clippers. Clippers. That's scary. Wait, but who did they get? I mean, uh, if you trade him, you must get at least some. Uh oh, I thought they 
got picked for that one. They, I think the one guy they got was Thomas Bryant from the Lakers. Oh right. They're. I mean, that's a good I pick. was hey, actually surprised that the Lakers gave him up because yeah. he's been hopeful. Well, they got Mobamba. They traded Pat Bev for Mobamba. Lakers out of. They're yeah. pulling some strings, man. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I mean, j- I'm gonna just say it for my guy Ricky Foyce. I know that you're watching this. Sun's gonna do it this year. This year is our year. Even though all Ricky's boys are gone, though. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. His boys just got traded. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, yeah, I'm actually kind of sad. I'm on the other hand, like you did get KD, but like the way like Mikhail like really bought McCall it. better. McCall's yeah. better. Like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I mean that's a bald statement right there. <laughs> I'm never gonna root for KD. But yeah, I'm, I'm a hater. Just the way Mikhail really brought into the culture and system and uh, you can tell that he loves playing every second that he played for Sun so that's r- a little bit sad but they did get one of the best players in the world so you gotta appreciate that true that true um, so it's Suns Rockets no <laughs> 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 oh sorry Sengun gonna Sengun. <laughs> carry uh, yeah I got Nuggets Nuggets Suns Celtics Celtics that's what it is dude I feel bad picking the Celtics now yeah you well, okay wait so <laughs> Obviously, someone else might win it. So, who does the fourth forfeit? Like, probably two of us if one win, and then yeah. And right. if we all lose, we all do all it. Right. All right. Yeah. All so right. So make make it something I can do. So off the court, um, <laughs> definitely not on the court. <laughs> <laughs> like wear some <laughs> crazy shit. Josh running on the court during the <laughs> game. <laughs> 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 Josh has to r- storm the field or <laughs> storm the <By> court himself <laughs> <laughs> after beating Kyle. Yeah. Can I drink this, by the way? This is just prop. Yeah, it's what? Wa- yeah, it's no, it's a prop. Okay, okay. What is prop? <laughs> this is a prop. A just prop drink it. It's fine. It's, it's water. Um, <laughs> you can tell we're getting used <laughs> used to the set here. Um, okay, so we picked our NBA teams. I'm curious, personally, like growing up, um, did you guys have NBA teams that you rooted for or NBA players that you were rooting for? Yeah. Uh, my whole like, my brother and my dad, they were always always Laker fans, and I kind of started, like, being a fan of NBA and basketball when like Lakers and Boston like, I can't remember like '08 or whenever they were in the finals. So naturally, I want to go against my brother, and I was a Boston fan and like a huge like Rondo fan. Rondo. Uh, Rondo, yeah, like when I was, because I was shorter. I would guess that I was shorter you. too growing up. So I was like, I love Rondo because I was a point guard, shorter guy. So, yeah, Celtics were my team until, yeah. Damn, I wouldn't have guessed that. For me, it was more Steve Nash and Chris Paul, honestly. When you know Chris and the Lob City were in in Clippers, that was, you know, I really liked to watch Chris Paul's highlights. Now, dude was a beast. I mean, still is. I'm not gonna lie. True that. True. Even though Twitter don't think so, but I think so. <laughs> I saw you arguing. No, Dude. I mean, <laughs> I, I <laughs> wasn't arguing. It's just posting, so dumb. Posting screenshots of stats? No. It's of Chris Paul? No, listen. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. I said to myself before coming here that I'm not going to talk about it, but I might mention something. Chris Paul is a winner, no matter what. People, ha- uh, they, he has this narrative that he can't win, like, in playoffs. He's two years sober from his addiction mm. of going All right, to the say finals. The joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's in rehab right now. No, I, I, I have a huge respect for him. Yeah, I mean, it's just yeah. like, I don't know. I, I just the narratives so get kind of weird as soon as you get, especially once you get to the NBA. Like, the talent pool is so small and so ridiculous, and there's, like, such a small window for them to actually win a championship. Yeah. Like, th- yeah, like it's uh, it's almost like if you get near the championship and l- and lose, it's worse than never being near. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like it's like it's so hard to win a championship. Can you like, if you put it like realistically, if you look at these teams, like even us here, like we might be like completely wrong with the teams we just picked because of the talent in the league, and it, the craziest part is just keeps growing, like it just gets better and better, and you know, for that's the wild thing for me. It's I I'm not gonna ask us to go down the LeBron Jordan rabbit hole right now, no. but but that's I've like a lot of the argument is that okay LeBron isn't undefeated in the finals, but he also went to like what nine straight Eastern Conference yeah. Finals. Yeah, yeah. Even though it <coughs> it's not my guy, 
Yeah, but Curse is actually a huge LeBron hater. You're a so LeBron hater? He is. It's I I appreciate the greatness. Yeah, but, but I don't <laughs> Yeah, but I would over the shit don't wave it. <laughs> <laughs> you know this, right? Yeah, I was about <laughs> to say, just in case. But yeah, no, I don't know. He's I've a, a serial lyric. No, but he's wrong dude. No, but he's <laughs> like the one of the greatest though. Like I yeah. appreciate the greatness, but it's just not like I don't like him that much. As I would like somebody else. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, we won't go down that road. Yeah, uh, that no. uh, it's gonna be forever. I'm gonna get kicked off the show if we go down, <laughs> <this> <laughs> down that road. Next, we got oh. somebody else. <laughs> 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 um We mentioned some of the shout outs that the podcast got last week. Um, got some really cool ones. Forgot to mention the coolest of them all, which was Bill Walton. Right after the podcast first episode came out, uh, Bill Walton came in clutch. He and Dave Pash on, on ESPN during the Oregon game gave the shout-out to the podcast. So shout-out to them. Um, but there's another one that we should talk about this week, Titus and Tate, another big college basketball podcast. Um, I think it was – I don't remember which one of them brought it up, but – Brought up a little story about you, Kerr. Uh, it's always, I mean, it's always Kerr. About you, about uh, you, texting your now teammate Courtney Ramey when he decided to come to U of A. He didn't have your number. With the words, "Hey, it's your, it's your favorite point guard," <laughs> and it was misinterpreted, I think, as maybe an ego thing. I don't know. They were talking. Uh, like everybody does talks crazy about you guys because that's just like a fun narrative for them but you want to explain what was going through your head when you <laughs> decided to send that text i mean we really <laughs> we really needed him and uh and i would say maybe it's just me because maybe i just think of that but i feel like a lot of players like playing with me i don't know if it's wrong or so not. has somebody told you that <laughs> no, I never get the love. <laughs> no, I guess I have to get. I have to give love to myself. No, I, no. I, I agree. Uh, it's, it's been a Self pleasure ever since Valentine's I got here. No, and you don't have uh, to say it now, just to make me feel better. Curry is so such a great player. No, okay, go ahead. But I just, you know, um, <laughs> thanks. That was very ironic. I guess I'm not. Uh, <laughs> but uh, back yourself up, bro. <laughs> no, I mean, I feel like the style or the way I play, I feel like that fits a lot of people. You know, who trying to score the ball, or, uh, or you know, because I'm a pass first, and ever since I was like started playing basketball, I, I, um, I appreciated assists more than points. So, uh, I think if if you have that point guard, then uh, I, I think everybody's happy. Of course, there's some turnovers. I know they're gonna already <laughs> mention it. Oh my God! But he turns the ball over. It happens. You know, nobody's. I think too, like the a lot of guards say they're pass first, and like they'll rack up a lot of assists. Just like, but. The only pass they make is a uh, isn't like guaranteed assist. Guaranteed assist or like the way like we have or we want to play in our system cur that fits Curso well is like all the extras and the hockey assists and stuff like that. Yeah. So when I, that's kind of what gets on my nerve when people say that people are pass first and they they only make the yeah the like when you assist pass yeah. instead of like uh you know uh, flow of the game pass and stuff like that. And Call someone out. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I don't. I uh, actually can't think of any names, but uh, there's a lot of people like that. Yeah, there is a lot. Uh, yeah. So I mean, Justin just Justin Kyer just called me, and I'm about to call him back and see what he wanted or what up. Uh, what? What do you mean when you're done with that? Done with what? All right, but uh, the fans are actually live asking right now. They wanted to see your face here. Are you coming on s Friday? You don't play Friday, buddy. I don't have to play in order to make a pot. <laughs> see, that's what we were dealing with. Um, um, yeah, maybe. Probably. Yeah, he'll be here with uh, probably Christian. Yeah, you'll be here. All right. Peace. Maybe. Is that, that's your Valentine? I wish. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so another breaking 
breaking news. <laughs> Justin Kyer on guess. the podcast. Yeah. Next episode. Can't let us down because <laughs> we already said he's coming. All the fans are anticipating him now, so yeah, just hit up Justin up. on social media. Be like, yo, stop being a bum. Come to the podcast. You know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got a ton of responses uh, on Instagram and Twitter for the mailbag this week. Hundreds, actually, that we had to sort of dig through, find some good ones. Did you guys find anything that you wanted to address from the fans? Yes, there was. First of all, again, we have to say thank you for you guys, you know, participating and really, you know, make it interesting for us to to be here and talk and discuss. But uh, I mean, there was a lot of good questions. You probably left a lot of them out, I guess, too, right? Yeah, I'll say one thing. Most of the most of the questions were pretty kind and positive, but um, we need to give the University of Arizona some props because if people came away with one thing, they learned how to use their words. They have quite a way with words. If they want to get something across, wow, they really <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> dig deep into the bag of vocabulary. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What a sentence. Yeah, I mean, um, do you want to you wanna answer something? Or, or how do we do that? I mean, the n- one of the number one questions was about Briggs, right? He was the, <laughs> Briggs is yeah. the yeah. common yeah. denominator of... <laughs> Maybe for maybe the people who don't know, here one day. yeah, we got to get a huge get. Do you, yeah. do you guys want to give a little insight on who Briggs is for some of the listeners that don't know? Yeah, so uh, Brian Brigger, he's our equipment manager, also known as Emoy, equipment manager of the year. And, you know, such a great dude. Yeah, I mean. Loves, loves the program, loves the people. Yeah, people I mean. People love him. I would say, yeah, like. Uh, I wouldn't even entitle him as like with the job. Like he just he loves his <laughs> job, of course, but he just loves being, you know, around us. Uh, really, he loves basketball. He likes winning. Like he's he's one of the big reasons, you know, why why people come here. And um, and I'm gonna stick with it. Want to give us a Briggs question that you got? Let's see. What did we have? There was a lot of Briggs questions. Yeah. Um, I'll ask you, Kerr, what's your favorite Briggs story or moment? Man, with Briggs, every every day something happens. But uh, I don't know the favorite story, but I know for a fact that when I go to McHale Center, doesn't matter if it's for practice, for game, for shoot around, this dude has energy. And he's always positive. Like... If you if you go to the locker room, you see him. You're just smiling. Like it makes you like happy to see him. To you know, he's talking to you all about everything. He's he's really a genuine genuine guy. What about you? Yeah, I mean, he had a rough rough week oh, yeah. last week. Bengals lost. Uh, but you know, he's still coming in, coming in with the energy. Yeah, putting himself out there. But I I say just when I walk in the locker room and just see. Him and J Rock pounding each other. Yeah. Uh, no, like mas- no, massage pause. gun, massage yeah, gun they, pound. They, they yeah. use the massage yeah, gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They massage each other. Right, 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 right. But it's kind of clip like that. <laughs> nope. You s- keep <laughs> it in, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> you don't clip the most important <laughs> sentence <laughs> of the podcast. Yeah, it just br- brings us joy every w- every time we go in there and see them so happy pounding each other. Yeah. 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 So. Um, yeah, Josh doesn't know what to say now. <laughs> <laughs> he got him. A- after you guys are done uh, spamming Justin to get him on the podcast, we need Briggs on here. Go after him too online. Make sure he he shows up. Yeah, yeah, we need. Briggs we have questions him. now. Yeah, definitely. Um, can I ask my favorite Go ahead. <laughs> Briggs Go question ahead. that we got? And I'm actually I'm very very curious about this. This came from Daniel on Instagram. Shout out Daniel. Who would you rather live with? Briggs or Tommy? Briggs. This is for the rest of your life. Not just while you're here. Briggs. Easy. Briggs. Not even close. I love Tommy. Briggs. I do. But uh but <laughs> I can't talk about basketball all the time. Mm. I can't. <laughs> can't. Are we gonna have a little therapy session about Tommy right now? No, I mean no. <laughs> I am. No, Tommy's actually a funny guy. Don't get me yeah. wrong. Tommy, Tommy has some jokes and uh, he has some flavor to it. But, but I feel like, like as a life experience, with Briggs would be hilarious. And 
you would have a golf partner for the yeah. rest of your life. Yeah, facts. That that's actually g- good good point. Briggs is really good at golf. Really good. And he lo- yeah. Briggs is just such a happy guy. <laughs> good for him, man. Good for him. Should we just <laughs> name this uh, episode Briggs, Briggs Love? <laughs> Briggs. <laughs> Briggs Love for Valentine's Shut Day. Up, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Shut yeah. up. Shout out to you, Brigger. Happy Valentine's Day. Yeah, Briggs, we love you. What else did you guys find in the deep, deep, deep into the mailbag? You see, I haven't even. I have two papers here. Um, uh, favorite ex Arizona player that you've met or played with? Go ahead, T. Probably that I played with uh, Christian Coloco. He was just such an easygoing guy, and like on the court, he's like so solid like you can make tons of mistake on defense and you have CeeLo behind you so yeah he's he always gonna be good he did made, made us look good yeah he made us look he even great. made me look good on defense <laughs> <laughs> uh x player Lowry Markinen spamming comments <laughs> no, <I'm kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> no I don't know NBA just, all uh, star hey, hit him up uh yeah shout out all star first all star parents uh, and he's, he's starting now yeah which is big time good for him again. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, he's just a uh, humble Scandinavian brother. Yeah. No, yeah. Uh, I would go favorite decks. I mean, pretty much like since our, you know, Arizona recruits uh, players by, first of all, how, how they are as people. So, you know, uh, there's not a lot of bad people you, you get along, uh, you you come across when you come to U of A. And I feel like there's not the wrong answer you go with, but uh, I got to tell you, Justin, my guy, um, really. Um, dude was uh, starting, uh, came to Arizona, he knew his role, uh, never took anything personally, funny guy uh, outside of the basketball court, uh, very easy to guy, very easy guy to go along with. and. Uh, Ex players, uh, I, I mean Steve Kerr and uh, and T.J. McConnell, for sure. Uh, actually, with uh, Steve, I have a funny story. Um, so, if you guys didn't know, last year we played Utah at home, and I didn't play <laughs> that game. I didn't, and Breaking uh, news. and I didn't play the game. I mean, I was supposed to play the game, but like hour thirty, two hours before. We had a little incident in the um, elevator, and uh, you know, a little dick tapping, goofing around, you know, and uh, I got hit to my head, and my l- I chipped my even little, you little tooth from the. Is this breaking right here? That's breaking. That's breaking news. So I had a little, um, little I would say concussion, but it w- I I didn't feel good. And next thing you know, we fly like. Next week or two weeks later, we go to Bay Area to play the Stanford and uh, Cal schools, and and luckily we had a great break there where we could uh, we went to Warriors game, and of course Steve, Iggy, all these guys, you know who 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 went here. We had a, like a little meeting in the conference room before the game, and Steve goes up there, um, goes like, you know what, like guys, enjoy this, like this is the best best. The time of your life, you know, you're with your brothers, you know, you brothers for life, whatever goes on. And then it was like, yeah, like back in the days, like me and my boys in the elevators, like we used to always like dick tap each other and let's just goof <laughs> around. And everyone, <laughs> the whole room just turns like this. Yeah, their so head looking at Kerr like this. So <laughs> I'm I'm sitting in the front, and then I'm like, I see from the corner of my eye how everybody is just like this, and then. I go like this, and we start laughing because that was literally a week before what just happened. And I was like, holy shit, that's so cool. Like, <laughs> like that's fire. <laughs> and next thing you know, Steve goes, no, I'm just playing. Your coach told me to say it. And then oh we're like, my oh, God. my God. And one of our <laughs> managers after the meeting, Lou Candley, shout out, uh, came up to me and was like, how does it feel to know that Steve Kerr knows that you're goofing and dick tapping in the elevators. I was like, oh, all right, yeah, that's that's pretty funny. Oh <laughs> shit! Now the whole world knows. I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, for the clicks, <laughs> for <laughs> anything for <laughs> anything for, for the clicks. You know, you can't. So you can't play for the Warriors now. Say what? You can't play for the Warriors now. 
It's fine. I'll go through Rockets. <laughs> they need a point guard. <laughs> <laughs> they need a pass first point guard. <laughs> oh <No>, shit. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I mean that yeah, that was just a great story and uh probably will remember this for the rest of my life. That's serious stuff, man. That's mm. serious stuff. Yeah. We have anything else that we want to touch on in the mailbag? Siri wants something to say? Siri. By the way, funny story with Siri. I don't know how many people use Siri. Do you use Siri? Never. Yeah, well, she's got to be like 1% of well iPhone users. Well, you know our teammate Philip probably. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was actually yesterday or two days ago. Practice ends. It's me, Pella, Philip in the locker room, maybe somebody else. Next thing you know, Philip goes by himself. Me and Pella, we were talking. Philip goes by himself. Hey, Siri, what's the weather outside? <laughs> <laughs> or no, hey, Siri, is it raining outside? And me and Pella, we look at each other like, did he just use Siri? <laughs> so we, we <laughs> thought it was pretty funny because I've never met a person who like really uses Siri. Wow. Yeah. And also, we just got off practice the first thing yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah, literally. His phone. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Siri, what's the weather like? Yeah. <laughs> he must have had great plans after the practice. Uh, uh, he was like, <laughs> he was kind of whispering too because he didn't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty funny. Philip seems like a gem. No, yeah. Yeah. one day we one, one of a we'll kind. Have one of a <laughs> kind. On here too. <laughs> one of a kind. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's actually showed me the weather right now. <laughs> um. So if we have no no other questions that you guys want to bring up, I might close it out with the worst question that we got. Um, not the worst. Um, the oddest. Shout out. <laughs> the most interesting. <laughs> most interesting was from Hannah on Instagram. Most she unique. She had some other cool questions. But she wanted to know, first and foremost, I don't know if we're getting played or something. If this is like a joke on the internet and maybe we're just stupid. But she wants to know, if you were a crab, what color would, <coughs> would you be and how big would you be? Hard hitting, Hard man. Hard hitting. Jeez. Wait, where is it? If I was a crab. If you were a crab, how big would you be? Wait, what color? What co- and what color? Damn. I would Cra- be. I mean, crabs are right, orange, red. right? They're like red. No, th- when you cook them, yeah, they're orange. You're a big cooker now. Huh? Wait, actually. Do you guys cook? We have cooked. I think we should yeah. do it way more often. Mm. But, uh, you know, cooking is easy, but the worst part is the cleaning after. That's what gets you. And then they're like, you know what? Yeah, let it be. Just we need a podcast intern so we can. Yeah. So you're just like, you know, too. Uber Eats, McDonald's. All right. Quicker, faster. No, 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 no. no, no, no. That was Never. cap. But. Um, all right. Color, size, so crab. Back to the serious question. What you got? I mean. I don't even know if it's a good S- thing if you're big or ba- uh, small. <laughs> <laughs> Six foot crab. No, because then you're a target for everyone. Everyone's <laughs> gonna want to kill you. Yeah, that is. Yeah, I'm gonna go. It's with so interesting. This is how. We're t- oh, maybe this is how we find out. Like, are you a predator or a prey? I will get. Hell is concerned. I will get closer <laughs> to the camera. I would. I would be that big. And. The color would be whatever. Crabs are. So normal. Normal crab. Just tiny, tiny. <coughs> I would probably be camouflage. Mm. I would be Damn. able to camouflage you're, you're to my survivor. environment. Yeah. You were thinking about surviving <laughs> first thing. It was like, uh, yeah, nobody, uh, nobody no. kills you if you're small. <laughs> <laughs> and then I would be like, like huge, like probably like five inches. <laughs> huge five <laughs> inches. Oh, wait. We might have to crop that one out. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it's been a great, a great episode great with the one. nameless podcast. Um, I should say, w- no, but you didn't say. <laughs> oh yeah, f- yeah. I mean, oh, well, if I was well a crab, you don't really have to change the color. <laughs> yeah, I'm already. <laughs> 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 you know, ginger. That's a okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you love to bring this up. <laughs> <laughs> because he, wants, he, to is na- he one. wants to name the podcast. No, I mean that. the color of like his hair is what crabs are. It's true. It's true. Uh, if I was a crab, yeah, I would stay, stay the same color, and I would. Uh, we don't have limitations here. I would be the size of a blue whale. I'd be a whale-sized crab. Holy shit! Yeah. 
Yeah, you don't care about surviving. No. Oh, you're going to... People going are going to come him. at you, man. No, but he's going after. They <laughs> he's going after. Diver I'm with weapons. I, I, there's a picture in my mind right now about what this would look like. I, this It will be going into the video. Um, that's what I would want to be. I'd want to be like King Kong as a crab. No, but some rich guy is going to come like, I want that crab. I'm a giant room. crab. What's he going to do? All the Bro, money in the world. You know what? Pella has crazy ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Pe Pella has just... <laughs> Because we need more questions like this. So Bella can <laughs> wow, give Bella us the right like answers. Blow up some steam. Diving in <laughs> deep. <laughs> Too much time on the court. Not enough time to think about this. <laughs> um, yeah, so the most asked question, or not asked question, the most commented comment, yikes, uh, was that Crap. people are liking <laughs> people are liking the name, a nameless podcast. People think mm. we should keep it. I don't know. I don't know how people are going to find us that don't know us, but God, it's got a nice ring to it. So we're still exploring. Yeah, we got. We don't. We don't have to rush anywhere. Yeah, we're taking it slow. This is a light listen. It's like <laughs> a. It's like a nice Name? book. Yeah. Curl up with it late at night, fall asleep, listening to the voices of Arizona basketball and me. Man, you're you're the reason why it's happening. So let's give a huge shout out to Josh. Bravo, bravo. Guys, it's an honor. An honor and a pleasure. So I say we close it out. Another fantastic episode. We'll have another one coming this week, maybe with a guest. Who knows? Um, but thank you guys for the love and support. Um, keep coming at us on social media, Twitter, Instagram, at a nameless pod. Uh, give us a listen on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, leave a review. Thank you to everyone who has already. Five stars everywhere. Um, and like and subscribe on the YouTube. Leave a comment. Top comment for uh, for the forfeit for our NBA championship pick. That's that's what we're going to do. So so get active on that. Um, yeah. yeah. Anything else, boys? No, I think we got to go get Curtis Valentine's Day. Dang. Whew. Dang. What a way to close out. <laughs> I guess I have no option. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you.